because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Hey, look, we're recording, Adam. Hello, Robert. How are you? I'm I'm, I'm lovely. I, I just like that the first communication we had, other than not getting your mic to work, was Robert, press the button. Press the record button now. Press the button. Let's record this. We, we've got stuff to say. This is a this is a big pod. Hey, I just wanted to let you uh, let the viewers at home know that it's like four thirty a.m. where you are. It's dark outside. Your commitment yeah. to the pod is is just next level. We all appreciate could, that. Robert. Could 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 we say unparalleled? Unparalleled, correct? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> correct. Um, yeah, Rob, we got <laughs> man. It was. Uh, it, it, it was it was a spicy weekend. Uh, great pickleball being played at the Nationals. Uh, don't want to forget about that. But uh, quite quite a situation. Um, yeah. So I, I actually lots, uh, lots happening. Yeah, I, I'll I'll have to say I was actually the first person to make a post. I have never really done something like that publicly before. No, that's, uh, how you, that's I, not what you do. You're, you're behind of, the scenes, low key. You don't really cause a fuss. And I, Adam, I like the side of you where you raise concerns and issues and you get a conversation started because you know what? Conversations and pickleball are important, especially yes. when it comes to stuff like this. So thank you for being yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Robert. I mean, I had to get prof to help me to know how to post. I, I never, I don't even <laughs> I really post. This. So, uh, yeah, so it, it was basically, I kind of, I kind of waffled back and forth. Uh, I actually messaged Elise Jones early in the tournament because we, we did the breakdown and the preview for nationals and we knew that Elise was playing with Catherine. So I saw the yeah. draw, I saw the draw and it was Catherine and Anna Lee. And I kind of messaged Elise and I was like, Hey, do you have any details on this partner switch and women's doubles? I have no doubt something shady went on. And then she, of course, was like, oh, let me tell you. And so we kind of yeah. had a we kind of had a back and forth, had a couple uh, pros that I'm absolutely not going to name uh, text with me a little bit uh, just Same. about like kind of what's going on. Uh, and, Adam, and hey, Adam, yes. before before we get into the nitty gritty of like like uh-huh. reactions, what happened? Let's let's just give some context to people that might like because not everybody's. Uh, not everybody that listens is super aware of necessarily like what happened or what what went on. So you mind giving just some context around the whole scenario, I suppose? Well, actually, you know what? I have a little uh, – Elise Jones just uh, did an Instagram response to – to uh, she did a big post talking about nationals, and then she did a, a detailed response to someone who commented. And so basically what happened was uh, – Okay, so her and Megan Dizon, her normal partner, Elise Jones, uh, tried to sign up for the tournament about a month ago. Uh, they were denied entry, and you know they didn't think much of it. They knew they were late, so they couldn't get in. Whatever they moved this, on. This is a whole. This is a whole issue within itself. But continue. Oh, big time. Yeah. Uh, me, you, Corinne Carr, all tried to get in this tournament about around the same time, and and we were denied. And I didn't really think much of it, Robert. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, good, that's yeah. we were late. Whatever. So. Uh, we understood that we were late and moved on. Then the week of the tournament, Catherine asked me to play and I agreed. USA Pickleball let Catherine and I register and get in, which was frustrating to me and Megan. 100%. But but I decided to play with Catherine. Then once Lee got hurt, Catherine and Anna Lee started talking. And I have some pretty solid i mean i didn't see it but some pretty solid information that before lee was even off the court athena was talking to mr waters like, i heard the same i heard the i same. mean just cut throat right on it before they even knew like full-fledged details about lee's yeah. injury which is injuries are the freaking worst uh please lee ho- hope it's not too serious okay. um uh then once uh lee got catherine now started talking so then so then they just needed to chat with me. As I walked up to Catherine's manager and Anna Lee, Papa Waters, I knew this was already a done deal, knowing Catherine's history with dropping partners. So yeah. what was the point of throwing a fit? No point. So I said I was fine with it as long as me and Megan Dizon could get into the tournament. Catherine's manager said she would make that happen at 4.30 p.m. the day before the tournament started. Mm-hmm. As I started processing the whole situation, myself, Megan Dizon, and some other pros thought it was jacked up to do a last minute switch. If anything, Al would need to find a partner that wasn't already in a partnership. 
yeah. told the turn tournament director at 6 p.m. that that situation was messed up. Uh, hold on one second. But if he did make the decision, then he better let me and Megan play. For sure. However, uh, Megan Dizon uh, already had plans to be with her family, and she decided to play uh, – uh, she, she declined to play and told the tournament director she was not an option around 7 p.m. Yep. Then I got a call from uh, Catherine Parento's manager, Athena, at 9.30 that Anna Lee and Catherine Parento were allowed to play. I then asked, since I didn't have a partner, if CP and Al could partner at another upcoming tournament, and it was declined. With Yo, so this, is, so this is 9.30 p.m. the night before they're playing? Correct. Jeez. Correct. Okay. I... Uh, with frustration, I quickly got off the phone with Catherine Parento's manager. I asked for only my expenses to be paid for, and Catherine Parento's manager agreed, which was out, which I was truly grateful for, even though I lost the chance on competing for money. So the money was not That's offered. That's blood money. Yeah. <laughs> well, the well, the funny thing is that the money the, the money wasn't offered as like a peace offering. It was asked for by Elise. Uh, at the last moment. So uh, yeah. uh, just just crazy sequence of events that you know, all these things can happen late into the evening, the day before a tournament. And, and Catherine Parento's manager has the pull to make things happen uh, with the draw and whatever else. So just uh, after th this, this uh, message is a little bit more detailed, Robert. I was yeah. already obviously... Uh, not okay, but even with some of these extra details, even more ridiculous. So uh, yeah, yeah, that that, time, that timeline makes it worse, in my opinion. Like yeah, for, it, for for Elise to be going to bed not knowing whether or not her partner is going to play with her the next day is terrible. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that's uh, that's basically the story in a nutshell. And and like I and like you said, Rob, there's there's multiple like little things that aren't great about this. It's not just the whole thing as a whole. There's little, uh, there's, it's compartmentalized to little things that, that are very bad as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's too bad. And, uh, well, man, who, who's, I see, I see a lot of blame being placed at different places, right? I see a lot sure. of blame and rightfully so being placed on Catherine and Athena. Um, I see, you know, some, some blame being, directed towards USA Pickleball and the tournament director who uh, is, is that Don Pabin? I believe it is Don Pabin. Not his first controversy this year, if I remember. Of, uh, <laughs> the US Open debacle of, uh, you know, saying paddles aren't going to pass in that, in that little video. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Don's in the spotlight again. Welcome back, Don. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, then, and thirdly, we have uh, blame being placed towards um, Anna Lee, which, or let's just say the waters, you know, Anna Lee's what, 15, 16 years old. The I don't team. know how old she is. We'll say the team. But her parents have a responsibility here to also do the right thing, in my opinion. And, and I don't think they did that. And I don't, I don't think any of the parties did the right thing. Um, where do you think blame should be placed, Adam? Or what, where, where do you think things broke down and what, what yeah. should have happened? Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably say, I would probably have to say maybe even it's it's tough. I would put the waters last. Maybe yeah. that's incorrect, but I would put the waters last and I would put USA pickleball and uh, Kathina uh, number, number one. So, I mean, I have, I mean, everyone or a lot of these people that are going to be watching this have obviously seen a lot of the posts and a lot of the comments and whatever. Yeah. And, and I have a very rough history with Catherine's behavior to partners. Not only yeah. did she inappropriately drop my wife, but my good friend, Joey Farias. And the only reason I'm saying those two names is because they, they said it publicly. Yeah. And there yeah. is a ridiculous amount of more people yeah. that I will not say anything. If they want to come forward, great, but I'm not going to say anything specific about those people that haven't commented publicly. So that's the only reason I'm using Corinne Carr and Joey Farias. And let's be clear switching partners and possibly committing to a long-term thing and realizing it's not going to work out and then making a reasonable switch is something that happens quite a bit. Yeah. I had the same thing happen with me with Deckel Barr this year. And, you know, we were in different places. Uh, he was right. Uh, I, I kind of, of course, I got a little sad just because we only had one or two bad tournaments. And then we started discussing Part, partly breaking up, but it was very cordial. It was, hey, he was like, man, I'm not going to leave you hanging. We're, we're going to continue to play for these three or four months. 
And then, you know, the second half of the year, I'm, I'm, I I would, I want to play with someone else. And and I was completely okay with it. And, uh, you know, he didn't leave me hanging a week or two or a day or two before. And there was a ridiculous amount of communication between us, uh, leading up to that, to that breakup. So, um, I mean, I've spent many hours of my life talking to people, especially Corinne about, the injustices that Catherine has done to people. And it's just, it really just burns me up. And uh, to see this whole situation, it really, really, really was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Uh, and, and the main reason why I posted, even this situation's terrible on its own. I never would have posted anything if this was an isolated incident. This is a crazy, crazy body of work. Uh, and disrespect to so many people that are important to me over the past two or three years that I, I, I just, I literally could not take it. And I had to post something and uh, I got a lot of run with, with my post, a lot of good comments from a lot of people, but really kicked into gear when Dan Gingrich, who has a very significant uh, online platform, uh, when he, when he uh, posted something as well, it really took off. And, you know, I, I, I man, it, it's, it, it was kind of intense and whatever on Saturday when it was all happening, but you know, it, it's, it, it was a lot of piling on and I didn't even feel 100% comfortable with it, even though I completely stand by everything that Same. I said. Same. And, it, was just a uh, lot. it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot. And I was just like, man, you know, this is, you know, first half of Saturday, I was like, good, this is getting the, the run that it needs. Second half of uh, end of Saturday and beginning of Sunday, especially, I was just like, man, the, you know, this is, man, they are really piling on right now. But then, of course, Elise uh, gives the, the exact details in this Instagram post, and it's e- even worse than, than, than I realized. So, and- uh on the other, and at the same time, just watching that gold medal match yesterday, like it, it, like made me like it gave me like a bad twinge in my stomach watching them compete for a gold medal. Actually, yeah, no, like I, I was like they shouldn't even be out there, like and they're like pumping each other up. It's like it it just made me a little sick to my stomach. No, for sure, I don't blame you at all for that. So uh, yeah, so I I, I would say. Uh, from just just completely isolating this this one this one specific situation, I would say USA Pickleball and uh, Caffeina are are equally to blame at the top, yeah. and and not that there's not you well, know nothing to be said about the waters, but I, I would definitely put them at a fairly distant third, to be honest. What, what, like, what do you say to the people that, cause I've seen a lot of this, it's, it's like, you know, everybody's saying, well, you know, it's within the rules. Even Don right. Stanley said, well, this is, this is hundred percent within the rules and she had well, the right, she had every right to do this. Okay. Just because something's, you know, and it wasn't actually within the rules. It was within correct. a tournament, ter- tournament director's discretion, which what's, what's that mean? Right. You can do whatever you want essentially. Right. right? right. Like that, that should go away. Um, but what about what, what, what do you say to the people that are like, well, she, what she did was in the rules. She's, she's a professional athlete. She's competing for a gold medal at nationals. She's competing for money. This is a business. This is her livelihood. What do you say to the people that are, that are defending her saying that stuff? Right. Well, technically I don't, with the way it's worded, I don't believe it's within the rules. Now, I don't believe I, it is either. I, right. Technically how it's worded. Now there's that come those two words that you said turn or three words tournament director discretion you know that's obviously the grayest of areas possible but i think technically with the way it's worded it's not okay what happened so uh sure i think that there's a lot of people that that don't know the backstory and you know didn't know this timeline of yeah. of of events and how so many fairly accomplished players were completely denied entry. And then Catherine and Athena can just make some things happen at 4.30 PM. And, and all of a sudden, uh, up to 9.30 PM up was, to 9:30 was when PM. the approval got through. So, I, so what I would say to, to your statement, Robert, is if, if all of these people uh, have all of the information now that, that we're talking about and that's posted by Elise Jones here, then I think that they're ridiculous. And if yeah. they had a little sliver of information, then, you know, okay, that's cool. I, I, I get, I respect your opinion. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of get where they're coming from. But when you, when you have all the facts, if you think that, that what happened was okay, then I think that's just rough on you. Yeah. And at the same time here, we're, you know, I, I saw some other people saying, well, it's, it's no issue with the quote unquote manager, Athena, uh, reaching out to Elise and not Catherine. That's absolutely not okay. 
Right. Like, and they're like, you know, this is a pro sport. Look, this is pickleball. You know, let's, let's settle down. <laughs> I mean, we're, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't the Super Bowl. This isn't whatever. Even if this was tennis and like you, two people, two players have respect for each other, which I assume Catherine and Elise have respect for each other or did. Um, the least you can do is have a conversation. My God, I don't care how shy you are. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. You have the conversation, period. End of story. Right. right. I agree with you, Robert. And uh, I think it probably this almost nothing that I'm saying is speculation, but I this is speculation that Catherine knew it was wrong and thought it was wrong and and had had Athena had Athena do it for her because she didn't want to deal with it. And I think that that actually says a lot. So uh, if, if that's exactly the case or, or what her mindset was. So I, th- I think that that says a lot. And uh, yeah, just just it's just it, like you said, when you were watching the match, it just kind of it just makes my skin crawl. And uh, it's it's just it's just not OK. And it's, it's just too bad, especially for, you know, I'll tell you what, they did this to the wrong person because Elise oh, is very, is yeah. very much. <laughs> she's the sweetest girl on tour, right? I mean, yeah, right. Like, what, what, wrong person. She's like, she's smaller than everyone. She tries harder than everyone. She works harder than everyone. Uh, and, and she's very much uh, loved uh, in the community. So uh, th- this just <laughs> added another dimension to it uh, for sure. As, as the support for her was overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, people came out in droves. Yeah, and did. honestly, honestly, I did feel bad when it was all piling on, but I that timeline's just—it's unacceptable. It's ridiculous, is what it's it unacceptable. is. Unacceptable. And, and uh, I just, ah, man, USA pickleball—it's just so rough. Like how? I mean, these there's there's just the, the rule has to change. Whether you consider the wording of the rule or not, the the rule must change, and there has to there cannot be gray area. And I, don't, I don't even give a shit if the rule changes, to be honest, because it's just do the right thing. Human beings like right. just do the right thing. Like, don't don't be a bad person. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, like, it was a lot. It was a lot because, man. because this is what's happening. Right. Like her, her brand, her reputation's damaged now. It is like people. People aren't going to forget like this is a this is going to be. You know, there, there'll be new, there'll be new drama and new things that come in, new things that happen, but people, people won't forget this. I don't think, you know, oh, yeah. it, it's, it's little things that people will bring with them. Like, oh yeah. Remember when she did that to Elise and like that, you know, you made, you made some money in the gold medal match, but I would guarantee it's a net loss overall. Yeah. Right. And, and I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, you know, it says a lot with Elise, whatever Elise's little sentence was that said, oh, I saw, Catherine, Athena, and Anna Lee, and and Papa Waters talking, and and she knew, and, and, and she knew. With, with with Catherine's history yeah. of behavior, no. she knew as soon as she saw that little group of people talking. Uh, apparently, very shortly shortly after Lee Waters got seriously injured, she she knew it was over, and and that's I think that says you don't, I think you that don't says think, a lot too. You don't think they were checking on how Lee was doing? Oh, I don't. I'm, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. I'm just maybe, saying. Maybe Athena was going over there to see if she could, you know, call for help. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think that that was the case. But like I said, for that, that was secondhand information. Yeah. Uh, I, I obviously did not see that but specific Adam, I, situation. I, I also, I also heard that from several right. different pros. Okay. Oh, several. Okay. Good. Yeah. So there, there you go. Um. Yeah. Whew. Uh. And it's so, too bad because there was some great yeah. pickleball this weekend, Robert. And, you know, I think a lot of people are going to remember uh, this situation more than the great pickleball. And that's just too bad. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Asterisk, asterisk under that gold medal for them? Uh, yeah. I, I'm, uh, yeah, absolutely. Asterisk for sure. Asterisk. Um, Ask, okay. What is it? Ast- asterisk? Asterisk. Ast- asterisk. Asterisk. Ah. Thank you, yeah. Robert. You know, I mean, your pronunciation is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Flawless. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. So uh, what else are well, we going to talk about? I, I, <laughs> you know, I think, I think we go into a little bit of the, the black hole that is the USA pickleball. Uh, yeah. I mean, you I, know, we, I, we touched on it a little bit in terms of, of, you know, us trying to get in Megan and Elise trying to get in. Um, and I mean, we're not talking, we're not talking, three days before. I mean, we're talking a significant amount of time before the tournament was starting. Yes. Um, 
and I talked about this, I think maybe in a prior episode of, you know, that this isn't, this is an ongoing issue also with other, with other tours, you know, I haven't had this issue with PPA, but APP I've definitely seen, seen it and had it happen to me where it's tough to get in. Um, even though they need the players, even though it's good for the tournament, like I think I even mentioned like Viv tried to get into a couple last year and it was too late. So they wouldn't let her in. They just give, they give great players a hard time for whatever reason, trying to get into their tournament to help promote the sport of pickleball and their tour and compete. And it's like, guys, like, you know, have a little bit more flexibility for everybody, not just for hand selected people that you want to allow in. So Many pros tried to get in, could not get into nationals for whatever reason. I think what would you say, Adam? There were 24 teams in the men's doubles draw. So, so it was like low to mid 20s, and yeah. I was told when I tried to get in that we're we're stacked at 32, can't do it. So I'll, right. I'll ch- basically, I was told we'll check. Uh, got a message back. Sorry, can't do it. We're at 32 capped. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and uh, obviously, let's be clear. Um, uh, I, I I I watched our old episode, and I say obviously too much, but that's that's a different story. Um, so well, hold on, hold on, just don't for, don't stop your thought. But I also had a realization of something I do, but it's I didn't notice it on the podcast. I say for the word A L S O, also like a, I, I, I pronounce it like A L T Z O, like also. Oh. Yeah, that's interesting. It's yeah, bad. I don't know about that one. Also, also, okay. I think Sorry. I think your I think yours is worse than mine. Actually, thank you for yeah. making me feel I better think my, about that. Mine might be actual a, a speech impediment, so you're not fun <laughs> of somebody that's disabled. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> right. So, and I know that I, I don't. Uh, obviously, we know what Elise said uh, in, in her post, but I don't even know exactly what the situation was with Colin's brother and trying to get in, and then wasn't in, and then was in again. Obviously. Colin's brother and Catherine, ridiculous body of work. Uh, you know, they, they are, you know, better players than a lot of the players that tried to get in. But they're, they're this, I mean, Corinne is very decorated. Uh, myself, I mean, I've won 35 plus nationals in singles and doubles. Granted, this was, you know, a couple years ago, but it's not like it was just some five O's trying to get in the yeah. tournament. These are like legit pros. How can there be that big of a discrepancy re- discrepancy on favoritism when we're talking about legit pros and then uh, elite pros? So uh, there, there might only be, you know, whatever, five or 10 or 15 ranking spots between, you know, Catherine and, and some of the people that are trying to get in. It's yeah. not like it's it's scrubs trying to get in no. and then pros trying to get in. It's very much not that. 100%. So... Fix it. Be better, USA Pickleball. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Yeah, and let's um, and and just to get back to my good cop roots, it's okay. not like this organ. <laughs> so t- <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this organization has not done a lot for pickleball and plenty for pickleball, but they do have to to make it a little cleaner and clean up their act in situations like this. Would you Would you please uh, refresh my memory on the specific uh, U.S. Open stuff? I, I know the general of what happened with the paddle testing and whatever else. Uh, do you, do you have any more information on that, Robert? Yeah, I believe, I believe, um, so a couple of things happened. That's when carbon, that's when the carbon stuff went down, mm-hmm. the battle stuff. And I believe it was Colin's brother that, that complained and brought that to light and did like a random, they did a, the random test on the spot and like it was sketchy testing and, right. you know, they made USA pickleball made an unprecedented move of not like warning or not like trying to get it. It was just an all out ban of the paddle, which let's be honest, that, that, that had to like carbon handled that really well, but it's had to have very much negatively affected their business. You know, they're, they're not sponsoring nearly as many pros as they were before. They had a lot of pros with the paddle. Um, it, they took a big hit. Um, and that was a USA pickleball, um, as far as I'm concerned, that was a USA pickleball decision there. I know Don Pavin was on site and then, um, and then a bunch of paddles, you know, started getting tested cause they have the little, the start, uh, little roughness tester there. So mm-hmm. there's a video that somebody recorded of Don Pavin testing, I think a Yola and saying, Oh, you don't want me to test that. That's not going to pass. And then um and then it, it never <laughs> and then it, like nothing happened with it yeah so, right right so uh, interesting stuff uh um, yeah but just 
yeah, Don Pavin hasn't had very ha- had a very good year in the public eye. Right. So, so uh, Robert, do you think that having uh, maybe a player council or player committee uh, with a variety of levels of pros kind of tiered off would yeah. be something that could. I mean, it should probably just be cleared up either way by by yeah. these by these entities. But do you think that that is something that could help this process and, and kind of uh, if if there is a little uh, gray area with with the entities making the decisions that the the player counts or the player whatever could could make that a little cleaner uh, for those entities. Yeah, I don't think it would hurt. I mean, if yeah. the, having having players of different rankings is kind of what the, the ATP does. I think they have a couple players that are, you know, top 25, then top 50, top 75, top right. 100, and it keeps right. going down. So, so, you know, players of all rankings are represented um, within that council. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I just, I don't know in terms of these instances what that would necessarily accomplish other than working with USA Pickleball and saying, you know, you know, and having unified voice. Right. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it gets corrected, but yeah, I, I think players coming together and having, having a council or a union would all, would always be a good thing. Um, you know, we've had a lot of fragmentation in the sport with players on different tours, players have diff- having different values based on those tours and different incentives based on those tours. So it's been pretty difficult in terms of having a unified front and pickleball. Hopefully the MLP and vibe merger will help bring some of the PPA players um, and the APP MLP players together more. Um, we shall see, but I think, yeah, I think a unified front is necessary. And I think Casey Pat um, has talked about that for a while and it's something we need to do for sure. Oh, okay. That's the, uh, so volleyball, he does, so, volleyball and does some podcasting. And I think I yeah. saw a post about a player union of some sort. And I think I saw he, him get tagged in that. So that, yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. I did not know that he was kind of an advocate for that. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's so, what they did in beach volleyball. Right. Right. And I, and I've heard, There's, I heard people in the comments on some of the threads talking about how beach volleyball partnerships are kind of a SHIT show as well. And there's yeah. a lot of the similar, drama that that has kind of you know unfolded here in pickleball as well so uh yeah so that uh okay well i just wanted to hear your views on that and uh yeah you know maybe that's that's a direction that we need to head uh if you know if uh, unfair things keep happening so yeah i mean i just don't know how relevant usa pickleball is going to be yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. But I'll tell you what, it's been a couple of years or two years since I've been to nationals. Man, that's a pretty place. Awesome God, facility. Looks, looks unreal. The courts are sweet. It, yeah. Man, it, it was beautiful. It really was. Uh, and, you know, always through a, a four day or this one, even more than a four day tournament, there's going to be some ups and downs with the uh, with the crowd. But man, uh, when that play, that place was almost filled up a couple different times. And, you know, that's that's cool to see some real real stands and some real uh, fans in the stands. And it, it seemed like it was a pretty good atmosphere from, from what I saw on the stream. So uh, Adam, you know what I like about um, like a tournament like nationals and like the U S open outside of like all the stuff that happens with pro players and how they get treated, all that stuff. Forget the free, set that stuff aside. Mm-hmm. What I like about nationals and U S open and even how TOC used to be is that they were standalone events um, and not part of the, not part of the tour in respect to, gotcha. you know, you could be playing, you could be outside of the different like championship court. If you're watching on stream, you could be watching um, the Austin open PPA Austin open versus the PPA Cincinnati and not really see much of a difference, not really understand how it's a different tournament. Um, I like how nationals has its own branding. I like how the U S open has its own branding. Same with TOC before it was PPA. Like, and it's not just its own branding and its own look and feel. It's also the anticipation of that stop for a year, for a year each time for, you know, there's that tournament ends 365 more days. It'll happen again. Um, and there's a lot more anticipation that builds up for that. So I think there's something to be said about like, you know, these tour stops and these cities taking some ownership of of the tournament in, in some sense, I don't mean ownership in terms of like business equity. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it looks like. I don't even know how the ATP does it, for example, but I just love the fact that if you watch like, you know, different tour stops in tennis, 
it doesn't just feel like another stop on the ATP tour. It has that, that tournament has its own sense and feel and brand and it's that city's tournament. You know what I mean? Those people look forward to it every year. Yeah. So I, I just wonder how that could be replicated in pickleball because it's really special in nationals. You can see it and as well as the U S open. And we can, and we can use this word again, dare I say there's good vibes at those tournaments. Yes. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> but no, I, I, I totally agree. And it's just, another one, another one, another one. And then you have a special one. And I do think the build is real. Like people will plan their vacations for these specific tournaments, uh, amateur players. And there's a, there's a sense of, of it building and you know, it's going to happen again next year. And it's a special tournament. It's a little different, different, uh, you know, energy, different vibe, different, whatever the case may be different vendors. But uh, yeah. I think that that's a really, a really great statement. And I think that I, I think that that's absolutely true. And it, and it does make it a difference and make it a little more special. Yeah. Cause you see with the APP too, like every, every tournament feels a little bit the same, right? And it, it's, it's a little disorienting for players. You're like, where am I this week? Cause everything, <laughs> everything looks the same. Like right, we've got right. the same backdrop, the same, everything, the same vendors, the same tents, the same players area, just a little bit of a different stand. And Oh, there's a waffle house. Like, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's all mostly the same. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I don't think that that's bad. I think it's great that that's happening, yeah. but I do think it is a little different uh, when the tournament is, is, is like what you're talking about. So, uh, Adam, so we'll I've have, got another, I've got another point I want to talk about, but I need to just ooh. refill on coffee real quick. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk about, uh, I really liked the, the uh, three court situation. Uh, this is with exactly what I was going to go into. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, get your so coffee. Be good cop. Be good cop. Okay. Yeah. I'll be good cop. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought that the, uh, the three stream situation was awesome. Uh, so many, uh, deep draws and high level players and fantastic matches to, uh, to only get that one court, uh, you're definitely missing some action. So, uh, to be able to kind of bounce around, pick a match that you like, pick, pick uh, pick a, a player that you're a big fan of and be able to watch, you know, maybe their second or their third round match, I think that that was that that was really nice, and I took it I took advantage of that throughout the day's viewing. Uh, so uh, uh, kudos to them for doing that and giving the the viewers uh, a variety of choices to to tune into. I don't have pants on. You know, why would you? I don't think that's a shocking statement. I think it's standard, <laughs> standard stuff. It's uh, a standard <laughs> podcast. I got a got a collar shirt on top and nothing on the bottom. Gosh darn, gosh darn champion you are, Robert. I love it. All right. So how, how'd your conversation go or your soliloquy about uh, the three court streaming? You said, no, you no. Like, yeah. Oh, I just said it was great. And you know, there's yeah. lots of, there's lots of fans that follow certain players and these players Dude. are playing like super high level second yes. and third round matches. And to be honest with you, uh, uh, some of the tours, maybe specifically the PPA, you know, I, I don't, I don't really care to see, Colin and Colin's brother playing two, four fives uh, in the first or the second round when yeah. like there's a whatever, like a Spencer Smith, Tyler Loom, Pat Smith, Callan Dawson type matchup going on in the second round where it's like super close and super talented players. So yeah. uh, uh, to be able to bounce around and be like, oh, I've seen this one before or, oh, this is going to be a slaughter and be able to jump to a to another match that's very competitive. I, I, yeah. I really liked that as a as a viewer. Yeah, no, loved it. I thought, yeah, I think three courts is the most a tournament ha has had streamed. And, you know, I think shout out, big shout out to Boxcar Productions, Kyle Salenko, because they they did, they made that happen, set it up. And they, it, it looked great, man. It was, the production quality was really high. Um, graphics looked amazing. Everything was solid. Um, what I would say is I get, like, I lose my mind when I'm watching good pickleball, especially on three courts. And then I'm like, where to go? How do I find it? And then I spend like, <laughs> I spend like 30 minutes on a smart TV trying to figure out, you know, why? Oh, like searching, <laughs> yeah, searching like in the stupid little search text that takes forever. And I'm like, we have to fix this. It's a joke. And it goes from, it goes from three courts early in the day and then switches to one court on ESPN plus later in the day. And you still have a bunch of good matches going, not just one court. Like you have really, you have like fit six matches in the back, you know, that aren't being streamed. Even, even 
I think we didn't even see the winner's bracket final on the men's on one of them. winner's bracket final between, I don't know, decent players, Deckel Barr and JW Johnson, Matt Wright and Riley Newman was not, was not available yeah. to see. I mean, how I, is that? A I, thing? I heard it was, um, I, Kyle, I think Kyle mentioned this, that, that Tyson didn't want to go on 45 minutes after his match with Colin and, so because he got a longer rest, they had to like, it, it pushed the schedule into some okay. weird thing or something happened like that. All right. But regardless, why couldn't we maintain three courts? Like, like you are making it harder to watch the sport. We have to make it easier. Like <laughs> we have to make it easier. We have to, we like, do you want people watching? We need live stream viewers. We need higher numbers. Why? Like, path of least resistance let's not make right. this difficult like if yeah, i, I think, like i'm tech savvy i know how to find stuff i have every app there is if i'm having a tough time finding how to watch this match we have issues hundreds we, of people because they need to be able to cater to people like you adam who, <laughs> <laughs> who is not tech savvy and who does yes. not know how to find anything that's so very true very if they true. if they're if they're catering to me they need to be catering to you. But <laughs> point being, like, we have to make this easier. We have to stream more courts, the props on the three courts. But why can why can we not get 10, 15 courts streaming? Just put a little camera in the back. I don't need yeah. just put on court audio. I don't even need any commentators. I prefer no commentators, other unless it's Adam. Stream more courts. Buy, I'll buy the cameras for you. We can oh. get on a finance plan. We can do whatever we need to do, but let's let's get more courts streaming. Just stream them. If and if you don't want to stream them, let people there stream them. Don't yell at them for trying to stream on their camera because you're not streaming them. Done. That was good, Robert. That was very good. It's I frustration, like Adam. Because yeah, I want to watch I want to watch more good pickleball matches, and I know that people do. And I know I don't care how many how many people we have viewing championship court. Who cares? Let's look at the whole, let, let's get 10 cameras going. It's a numbers game. Let's get 10 cameras going. You'll have more eyeballs. You'll have more people watching. You'll have, you know, people that are following. I don't know why we always go to Spencer Smith, but Spencer Smith's family in Utah can now watch his court and he, he can have his friends watch. Like it, it'll bring more eyeballs other like that wouldn't be watching otherwise. Right. Right. And, and you're exactly right. The, the junkies, and the and the regulars, they're they're gonna search through and figure it out. But those casual viewers, I would venture to say hundreds of people were just like, ah, screw it. I'll I'll watch something else or something that they were tuning in and either this lost the stream hard. or I, couldn't yeah. or couldn't find it. And they're just like, whatever, I'll turn it on, whatever the hell's going on, NBC and watch football or something like that. And not to know? mention so, ESPN Plus is a it's a paywall. You have to pay for it. So how many oh yeah, how many yeah. how many eyeballs are we missing there? Right, right. No, I, I, yeah, I heard, I saw plenty of people on social media asking for updates because they don't have ESPN plus, you know, which is, so. which is like, we're talking about the fans like, or the sports, most rabid fans that want to watch, that want to engage, that want to know what's happening, that want to watch and share on social and like spread the word of pickleball. And we're not allowed, like these people aren't allowed to watch, like, let's, let's get it together. People come on. Atta boy, Rob. This this is this is it. That's that's a good little that's a good little bad cop spiel Sorry, there. I just I, I just I respect it, every minute of it. It's super frustrating. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I do I do agree. So do you uh, do you have any more topics you would like to talk about, or should we actually talk about some of the results in the tournament? What, what no, would you like to not, do? Robert? Let's not do that yet. Okay, talk about results. Yeah, let's talk about. Um, good. Just I just have a little couple notes here that I'm looking at. We talked about registrations, how they're making exceptions. Talked about a lease a little bit. Um, I did hear that CP is getting a little, a uh, little taste of her own medicine for Takea. I think Leia dropped her. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And hey, and I'll. I always go back to my to my gosh darn good cop roots, but yeah. this it's not like. Catherine is the only person that has no. ever done something a little shady or whatever. It's just the frequency and the length of time it's been happening and the number of times it's happening. So yeah. there's a lot of non angels out here and we haven't really said much about them and, and a lot of some of the stuff that goes on, but yeah. man, man, when it's just so many times, it's just so like a little, just every time I hear a story about it, just a little piece of my heart goes away and I'm just like, God, ah, and, and it just, it just really burns me up. And 
yeah, like I said, Robert, I just I just couldn't help myself. I, I, I had to say something. And man, Dan Gingrich piled on big time. Yeah, he did. And yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And while this is not a good decision by Catherine or a good pattern, I like Catherine a lot. I think she's a good person. I think she's very nice. Um, made very questionable decisions in terms of partnerships. Maybe that's influenced by Athena, who I also like, but not treating people well. Not a big fan of that. Um, but to be clear, like you said, Adam, they're, they're not the only ones. She's not the only one. And there are people in this sport that have done way, way, way worse things than she has. All right. <laughs> that's all I got for that one. <laughs> okay. No, it's good. Was that a solid pause? No, no, it was good. It was a solid pause. Um, solid yeah. pause. Deep eye yeah. contact too. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. That was, that was very solid, very solid, but it was, uh, it was, it was very, it was very funny because a lot of, a lot of the wording that Kathina uses is, uh, just, it's just very cold and very don't, I hope, I hope this isn't going to affect a friendship or, or you're not going to take this personally. This just is a business decision and it's a business decision and it's a business decision, but it's yeah. just handled in such a bad way that I think that their good business decisions are really going to start affecting their business. Uh, as, as people kind of have started to realize that there's some shady behavior going on. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to, I mean, I think they're, I, I think Catherine's a great player and I've heard, uh, you know, some solid things about their coaching and whatever else. But I mean, when you're in a business and you're in a community that's small and you are just burning bridges and stepping on people's toes, how the hell is that a good business decision? No, I just, I just don't understand the logic and the, and the whatever behind it, but bro, short term, short term mindset versus long term mindset. It's yeah, a, it's a big deal. Like short term money grabs, which you know we see it in pickleball, right? Because you know it's it's sitting there a little bit, and it's not huge yet. So you're capitalizing on the short term. Long term's everything. Got to play the long game, like business relationships, life. Like the long game's everything. They're not right. playing the long game. Right. And I've also, and you can't really blame, uh, I mean, this might just work out perfectly for Catherine. Uh, like I said, super, 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 really, really hope Lee's injury is not very significant, but Catherine's been denied by a lot of the top girls asking them to play because of how many bridges she's burned and her behavior. And, and how can you blame these girls? They don't know if they're going to have a bad tournament and Catherine's just going to drop her for the next best thing. So, um, 100%. Uh, so, you know, I, I mean, I don't, man, it's, it's just a lot of bad cop for me, but I just, I hope Lee's fine. She's playing with Anna Lee and Catherine's on an Island from how she's treated people, uh, these last couple of years. So that's, that's, I think that's going to be the last thing I say about it, but, <laughs> uh, what, what, what other topics you got over there to get me off this bad cop rant, Robert? No, I was just, I was just thinking like, um, just, we see this a lot more like, like I've seen it a little bit on the men's side, but way less so, right? Like, like if it does happen, there's usually solid conversations around it and there's, there's a decent level of respect on both ends and understanding. And um, like, I've had to drop a lot of partners this year because I haven't traveled or haven't played as much, you know, but um, which I always feel horrendous about, you know, nope, not going to be able to make that one because I know that like, I, that's, that's going to lend me the reputation of, I don't know, like if I sign up with Rob, is he actually going to play this tournament? I don't want that reputation, right? right. Like that's a, that's a terrible thing to have. Um, and I, not, not, a, not even reputation wise. I just don't like letting down a partner and not being, being there to play when I've committed to playing. So um, yeah, I just, I just don't understand how people can't feel bad about commitments they make and break because it makes me feel yeah. like crap. Yeah, it, it eats me up too. And we were all, we were both in a tough situation, I think. And it was the same thing. Uh, last year, two years ago, when I was, when Steve Deacon was struggling with the wrist, it's very yeah. tough when it's an injury because you like establish this timeline. You're like, you know, ev ev everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be good. I'm going to target this tournament or that tournament. Yeah. And then there's a, a slight setback or, or, or something's not working out and you yeah. want to like balance it out. You don't want to leave the person hanging a few days before, but you really think you're going to be able to play. So it's, it's a very delicate situation. I don't know exactly what's perfect in that spot, but 
letting someone down is is rough. It's bad. I've had to pull out of tournaments because of cramping and just feeling terrible. And man, it's just, it's just a really, really, really bad feeling. And I, it kind of consumes your thoughts for some period of time. And, and I, I just really, really don't like it. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, so yeah, some people being able to do it. Yeah. It's a different, it's a different breed, I guess, but yeah. uh, let's get into some <laughs> results, Adam. Okay. All right. Let me let me see some stuff here. Uh, I didn't make any notes, so oh, I'll actually, apologize. Adam, yeah, as as you look that up, I did put out a I did put out a IG story about uh, kind of submit questions for the pod. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's that, that's good. While I, while I pull up these these draws, uh, well, NML is asking me if if I know when uh, when. Catherine Astelis to play nationals. There have been a couple of different versions out there. So not sure if you had an answer. Do you know when Catherine Astelis to play nationals? Well, according to Elise, it was a few, a couple of days before. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, so it was pretty, it was pretty. Yeah. So basically, was, cause, cause, cause I believe NML messaged me too. And they, there was something about how Catherine said she was playing with Colin's brother, like a couple months ago or something. Yeah. And, but according to Elise, Catherine wasn't planning on playing the tournament. Then she got Colin's brother as a partner, decided to play it. And that's when Catherine was like, well, if I'm going, I might as well play women's as well. And asked Elise to get in the tournament a few days before it. Uh, I also heard that Catherine was supposed to play with, uh, with JW and something happened. Da, 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 da. She said she wasn't going to play the tournament at all. And then she was signed up with Ben, uh, which you know, I, I don't have any problem well, with that. If you, you weren't going to play maybe, and then maybe ah. she wouldn't have lost three Oh and three. If you play with J-Dub <laughs> man, tell you what, Anna Lee waters. My that was God. a, that was an ass. She is, that was she a is, legit ass whooping. She is ridiculous, man. And the thing is, is I think a lot of people like focus on the, the speed ups and the power and, you know, some of the shot making her movement and her defense is ridiculous. She doesn't miss. She doesn't miss. And she has great shots, powerful shots, deceptive shots and great hand speed. So, I mean, she is the total package. And uh, I think there's a huge clump of girls really close at level right behind her, but she is well distant there's from a, that clump a, way more than, than Riley or Collins brother is. So it's, yeah, it's wild sure. how, how good she is. Yep. Three Oh and three. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's just you know full fledged next level. So, oh, did you you said you had a couple a couple uh, questions? No, go go on. Let's do the results. Okay, so questions. Yeah, so we're. Uh, well, I'm just going to scan through the draw. Uh, we have. Uh, we'll start off with men's doubles. We had man talk about a pretty intense first round. We had uh, Kyle Yates and Julian Arnold versus Callan Dawson and Spencer Smith first round. That was the first one I looked yeah, on. Yeah. That, that match took like three hours too. Yeah. Like, I, know. I remember so, like I was scrolling through. And I was like, Oh, they're still playing. Oh, it's uh, like four, four in the first. Yeah. I think what? it was on CC two actually. And I, yeah. I was just like, I kept like looking for another match to be on there and there wasn't. So uh, Yates and Arnold uh, ended up taking that one 11, eight in the third and then had a tight one with Matt and Riley. They, they won the first game 11, seven, and then, Lost four and four after that, but still going three with Matt and Riley. Very good result. Yeah, uh, we had Frazier, Frazier and Hewitt. Uh, interesting pairing we've never seen before. Um, beating Wilson and Kohler in three, and I, yeah. I certainly wouldn't say that's surprising, but maybe, no. maybe a slight upset. Slight upset, uh, yeah. And then Wright and Newman handling Frazier and Hewitt in two games, five and nine. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, let's see here. We had Barr and Johnson. Oh yeah, we well, let's not let's not forget to talk about uh, Jay Delivers and uh, the Crime Dog oh. Tyson McGuffin winning eight and eight against uh, Colin and his brother in the quarterfinals, and then uh, following well, that well, up, go just ahead. To, just, yes. I, I, I th- thoroughly enjoyed that match. Uh, <laughs> I have not seen Jocelyn play so well. Like oh. he was, he was, he was reading balls, poaching. Um, like he played very, very well. Um, same with Tyson. Like they were super solid. I, I don't think I've seen them play a better match. And yeah, I, I just, I just wish uh, this tournament didn't have a come around. Yeah. Right. And I, I did not see that one somehow. I, I don't know how, but uh great result for them. And let's not forget that, you know, a year or two ago, they, they didn't necessarily lose to them a lot, 
But Colin and his brother really struggled with with Jay and Pat Smith. They were 100%. always they were always super close in those yep. matches. And I think just you know taking balls out of the air, being aggressive, kind, kind of threw off uh, Colin and his brother. So just uh, you know just a little a little tidbit there that that might have had you know some some weight in that match that 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 Jay has something yeah. that that they don't love to play against. And and also I think um, I think Nationals especially being on those, you know, the courts, what I, okay, let's talk about nationals really quick. Again, the venue, like the stands are right on top of the courts. I always talk about this. I love venues where the stands are tight to the court. It's intimate. It's uh, the fans actually get into it. They can hear everything on court. And I think for guys like Tyson and Jocelyn, who the crowd loves, right? Like they get, they get the crowd into it. They've, you know, Tyson's barking, Jocelyn's fist pumping. They're, they're looking at the crowd. They're, they're trying to get, some noise versus like uh, Colin um, who are just super quiet and reserved and not really liked by many people. Um, I, I think the, the, yes. what? the crowd, the, no, like the crowd matters. Like you want the crowd on your side. So I think, I think it really like that kind of venue really suits um, kind of the people that play to the crowd. I, I think you're totally right. Like I even heard some, I even heard quite a few boos um, in that women's gold match with a, uh, you know, with some calls by Catherine and Anna Lee, like yeah, right. the crowd was right. getting into it. I like that. I, I like when the crowd chooses sides. I like when, you know, it's, it's like the U S open tennis. It's fun. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And even though uh, the stands weren't super close to championship court, there was a ton of people in the stand. So that, that kind of makes up for it. But those, those first four courts, right. When you walk in the main entrance to the left, are awesome because there's like four or five or six rows of seats and they are directly on the court and mm -hmm. you hear things there's vibe you you know you see tyson doing this stuff barking flipping his mullet and stuff you know you know yeah pounding the chest you know people love that stuff and you got you know jay going come on <laughs> <laughs> really good adam yeah that, really good <laughs> really good yeah yeah so uh holy yeah that, that was really yeah good. i don't think that there's any uh, confusion about it. One People more, like watching them. They, they they like watching Tyson and Jay. I need one more. Come on! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> love you, Jocelyn. Love you. Yeah, of course hair we love chest. Jocelyn. Yeah, hair chest. Uh, yeah, I actually, I'm not sure if you know a year or two ago I would I would have thought this, but I actually miss Jay. I, yeah, I, I, I miss Jay I, too. I enjoy my time with him, and he's 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 pretty funny and he's pretty lighthearted and has a good vibe about him. So uh, one, of, uh, one, of, one of my more enjoyable um, overnights at a tournament was um, spending the night with Jocelyn and Johnny Goldberg in a room. <laughs> oh, my. We, I'm sure that dude. Was I, I woke up. Well, first off, Johnny Goldberg always sleeps and he has a Celsius, has a Celsius right on his nightstand. So right when he wakes up, first thing he does before like, he even opens his eyes, he reaches over, cracks a Celsius, drinks it. Then he gets up. Is that so is, is that energy drink? Celsius? That's a, yeah, it's a oh, okay, gotcha. Drink. Uh, yeah, yeah, a healthy I, energy drink. I yeah, I, I had I had a friend who would. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but what they would do is they would set their alarm for like twenty minutes before they were supposed to wake up, pop an Adderall, and then go back to sleep, and then just wait wake up twenty <laughs> minutes later like, like like this. So similar. Go ahead, continue. That. I like continue. that a lot. I'm gonna try that. Uh, <laughs> I want to know that friend. Okay, uh, so yeah. then and then I would wake up and I would see Johnny looking out the curtain at the red lights and the cars going by and Jocelyn would be right there with them. And they would, as the light would turn green, they would make bets on how many cars would pass by before the light turns red again. Mm. So it'd be like an over under, let's say, right, right, you know, right. Setting lines. Seven, 17 cars. And then they're counting the car. And, and then the betting kept devolving to where they started gambling on coin flips, like mm -hmm. just a quarter heads or tails, $5. Like, just nonstop. And then, so these are just fun stories of behind the scenes on tour, on the road. Uh, <laughs> Jocelyn, Jocelyn would drive me to the venue. I think this is in LA. Um, and I told him, I was like, in California, because Jocelyn's, you know, a French guy that has lived in the US for quite a while, but I still like to act like he's just fresh off the boat. Uh, I was like, Jocelyn, in California, red, red lights just mean yield. Like if nobody's coming, you can just go. <laughs> And so I got him to run a couple of red lights and that was pretty cool. dangerous thing to tell, to tell well, someone. Robert. No cars are coming. I said, okay, I said, no. if no cars are coming, don't just okay. run it. Oh, oh, okay. All it's right. just, All let's, right. let's treat it like a stop sign. 
Yeah, well, tell you what, you're right. Johnny Goldberg likes to have a few cocktails and make some bets. And uh, yes, you, know, you know he's a real gambling champion when it doesn't even need to be something specific. Let's just start flipping that coin. Let's just start <laughs> flipping that coin. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Hopefully, yeah, they might have. Who knows how much they were doing the coin flips for, uh, depending on if someone got bit by a dog in Florida. Who knows? This could have been a thousand dollar coin flips, you know, if we had some good stuff going on. If, if anybody out there needs a personal injury attorney, Johnny Goldberg and Associates. Johnny Goldberg. He's um, like, if you get bit by a dog, that's an easy 30K. It's easy. easy 30K. <laughs> so if anybody's tight on cash out there, just, just happen to run into a dog, take that bite, get a little cash. Right. Talk to my boy Johnny. Oh, dear boy, Johnny. And then, okay, so we'll, well, I guess we'll continue, even though this was a very fun five this minutes. Is, I guess yeah, we'll continue with <laughs> results fine. here. Uh, we have, after that big win from uh, uh, the Crime Dog and Delivers, uh, they faced off against Declabar and JW Johnson and lost 11 4, 10 12, 11 4. Uh, very tight match, even though yeah. it was 4 and 4 in those other two games. So uh, I'm sure that was a very competitive one. I did not see that one either. And then we had Barr and Johnson. Winning two and three against Riley Newman and Matt Wright in the winners bracket yeah. final, very shocking uh, score. Obviously, uh, Bar Johnson studs on the court, but man, two and three against a ridiculously high quality opponent like Matt Wright and Riley Newman yep. is is a pretty spectacular result for them. It is. That was winners. What was that? Semi or winners? That was no. Semis, that was right? winners bracket finals. No, that was oh, okay. the winners bracket final, right? So uh, we had I guaranteed uh, them a. Yeah, guaranteed them a silver minimum, right? Right, correct. So we had an and wild format too, by the way. We didn't talk about this. So the championship oh, Sunday yes. matches are three out of five and a game to fifteen. Yo. Whoa, that's wild. <laughs> no, that's it's it's so stupid, huh? It's that's yeah, a, it's that's, one of the dumbest formats I've seen. Right. You're gonna like that women's that women's match, like you're gonna make them play a five game match and then Go to a game of fifteen. Like if you play a best of five, the winner the winner wins. Period. Yes. Right. So don't make it a yes. best of five. Make it a two out of three and then a fifteen. But right, to make it right, a best right. out of five. It's just absolutely. So I mean, they they definitely need to. The person coming through undefeated obviously needs to have an advantage. But to yeah. do three out of five and then the game to fifteen. Anna Lee uh, could have easily played eighteen games, including three. Uh, three that were to 15. That is a ridiculous amount of pickleball in one day. And I, I mean, I, I get them wanting to extend it and, and make it as long as possible and have, you know, the great matches with the great players that were out there. But man, three out of five and the, and the, Yo, the game to 15 is wild. We play, we playing with a Franklin. Yeah. That n another, another big factor. Uh, so if you uh, don't know out there, the Franklin just plays a little softer than a Dura. So uh, points are extended a little longer, mm -hmm. definitely more taxing on the players, um, longer points, legs get cashed more. So, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to play that format, throw an X40 on top and you're talking about like, yeah, I mean, it, it, not to be dramatic, but we're talking about player safety now too. Like that, that can cause injuries, especially for somebody that's, you know, playing, playing three times in that day. So shame on you. <laughs> You like that? Oh, man, this, this is man, this is spicy. I knew it was gonna, I knew it was gonna be, but man, there's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't argue. <laughs> there's with that. a lot going on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chalk it up as wild that that was the format. Yeah. And uh, and we we've said it before, and I want to make this very clear. These balls are so different. P oh, players, yeah. there's so many players that are way better with the Franklin or way better with the Dura. And I don't think it's just as simple as uh, one softer, the one that prefers the softball is better with the Franklin, one that prefers the hardball. There's a lot of factors that go into it. It's, yeah. you know, initial speed ups being more on it. Uh, the, the people with the questionable soft games having more margin for error with the Franklin. There's so many factors that go into it. And I, I think eventually when we get a little more elaborate with the stats and, and whatever else, we're, we're going to see some players really struggle with, with certain balls and, and in certain uh, geographic areas. So I uh, just, just wanted to bring that up because I think it is a huge, huge deal and really uh, helps some players and hurts others. Yeah. Shout out to uh, real clear stats in uh, in Austin. Sorry. I didn't get back to you when I was in town. Couldn't make it happen, but that's a fantastic point out to, to see the differences in terms of 
in terms of player statistics. And you're, we're going to need a much, we're going to need some significant data to, to be able to analyze that. And they're just getting things rolling by doing stats, but they're doing a great job on stats. That's real clear stats. Um, that, that is, this is not a sponsored thing, but maybe it should no, be. And, and I, I, yeah. And I, I did a, <laughs> I, I sat down with them on a zoom call for 45 minutes uh, nice. a couple of days, a couple of days ago. And he just wanted to throw it all out there in yeah. terms of, uh, you know, what they were doing, what he thought, uh, should, are these stats important? Are those stats important? Just tell me a little bit, uh, yeah. about that. And, and I really enjoyed it. I I'm, I'm obsessed with fantasy baseball, huge, yeah. huge stat based sport, uh, obviously played, uh, poker for, for over a decade professionally. So I, I like Big the numbers. Guy. Yeah. I like the numbers. I like the stats and, and some of the stuff, uh, some of the di- uh, deeper digs that he was doing and some of the non, you know, standard stats were really cool to see. And yeah. uh, he, he had a lot of, he had a lot of good stuff uh, uh, from that MLP and, and he shared, he shared it with me and I, I enjoyed that very much. So you're right. Shout out to shout out to those guys or that. Yeah, guy. I like that. Get- I like that they're getting uh, player feedback too. Cause that's really important. And so I think, I think it's what a lot of companies actually miss. Right. Right. It's, it's very important. Cause I mean, I mean, he had, 40 stats or something, you know, a crazy amount. He was just kind of wanting to know what, and we, we kind of went through and kind of saw all these numbers and these percentages and what correlated to victory and what kind of was cloudy. You couldn't really tell. So it's, yeah. uh, yeah, I just wanted to say one thing, Robert, because, you know, I don't really like to toot my own horn, but I will. You never uh, do that. I had the highest percentage in MLP of making it to the kitchen. Uh, when we're serving, when we're serving the highest percentage, making it to the kitchen. Now, once I got to the kitchen, I got lit up a little bit, but yeah, uh, but you got there. to the kitchen. I got there. I got there. So uh, it was pretty interesting stats to see uh, the percentage. I think that's a percentage. combination. That's just purely a combination of two things, Adam. That's well, that's okay. that's just... downy soft hands. Number one. Okay. And elite foot speed. <laughs> <laughs> elite explosive <laughs> professional athlete for speed. Let's, let's be clear. Let's, let's, get a, let's get a little more specific there. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't say uh, the percentages of you know times I got lit up at the kitchen line, but I just wanted to balance that out a little bit. But I, was, I, I was like, you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. I don't. I don't miss a lot. I make it to the kitchen a lot, and I get lit up a little bit. So this, this, I think I think you're checks right on point here. Yeah, yeah. right on point here. So, uh, oh, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. So I just got, I'm just, I just looked at my phone here and I got, Oh, Oh, we got, we got big D Deckel bar sending me a novel talking about, uh, talking about his match. And uh, I always have some nice back and forth with Deckel about strategy and situations that, that he's been uh, getting into since, since I have uh, retired. So uh, I'll always enjoy that. And uh, you know, I'm, after this gets finished, I'll have to check that out and see what he had to say because as it plays in perfectly to what we're about to talk about, it was not the smoothest final for Deckelbar and JW Johnson as they went. That was a mess. Yeah. They went down in three games and then, and then lost the, uh, the game to 15 as well. So uh, obviously playing a gosh, stop saying, obviously, sorry guys. Uh, Very, very good opponent. So not, not, not shocking. Uh, Also. Okay. It just feels, it feels awkward. I got to work on it. Uh, All right. So that was, (laughs) That was men's double. So just a, a, a breakdown. Adam, let's let's ju- let's just forget the let's forget the results. I mean, I'm bored okay. already. I got some questions for us. Sounds cool. Good. Let's do that. Perfect. Okay, so this is from a fellow pro who gave Kathina the right to act like they do. Well, you've already gone through that, but lovely question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, Mr. Fresh Juice Box asks: With MLP growing in size, will we see less pros playing at tournaments? I don't believe wow. so. Uh, I, I think maybe I, I think maybe not right now or this year or next yeah. year, but I, I, I think that that's actually a great uh, little topic. I believe uh, Loongy Tunes, Tyler Loong, uh, yeah. veteran, veteran of the game, uh, high level player. He made a post on Instagram just talking about end of the season. Lots of people are flat. Lots of people are struggling with the, you know, the mental and especially the physical yeah. grinds of being on tour and the product is worse. So I think as uh, more money comes in and the prize money is a little bigger, I think that some people will choose to grind less, uh, play a few less tournaments and still make a similar amount of money. So I, I yeah. don't know if that 
happens next year, two years from now, or seven years from now. But I think it's a reasonable statement, and I could definitely see that happening. Uh, uh, I mean, because I think right now it's possible that there's so the PPA contracted players. Uh, I think they have to play at least twenty, or they want they want them next, to play twenty next year. I'm not like I'm this, not positive this, on that. This year was I think sixteen. Okay, so twenty. But next year, six, but next year's tw- next year's twenty. Right. Um, and then there's six MLPs on top. And what I've heard is that that PPA players will not necessarily have to play all six MLPs if they don't want to, even if they're drafted, which that's a whole topic within itself, right? Oh, man, I just don't understand how that's going to happen. What does that do for the draft and the value of it's the like, players? Okay, well, not- does, it make, does it make PPA players less desirable? Because you don't know if they're going to play all six. Yeah, or do you have I mean, to, or do you draft them, make them sign a commitment to play all six and then take them on? I mean, I think you have to, I mean, what, I mean, how huge of a deal is it that you might play three or four of the six? I, I, I don't understand that at all. Maybe it could be explained to me a little bit better, but I, I just don't understand how that works or how that's an option. And especially if it's up for, if it, if, it's not a guarantee. It's someone's not like, Oh, I can only play these three before the draft starts. If yeah. it's just kind of up in the air, you don't have to play them all. And they're just going to pull the rip cord randomly throughout the year on a tournament. That seems, that seems very crazy. Nobody's going to say, Oh, I can just play these three. They're going to be like, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Draft me. Yeah. Play them all. My, my team isn't very yeah. good. And they just, they just pull out. So yeah. Totally. yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they yeah, get, yeah. or they're in the second division. Cause there's they're talking about two divisions, second division. Uh-huh. And right. they're like, you know, this isn't going to be very fun. I'm out. Maybe yeah, right. we'll see what the, we'll see what the money is. Right. So I think that's going to be a big factor um, in terms of what's guaranteed to a player for playing. If it's, you know, they're paying a lot of people. If it's not, if it's not, you know, better guaranteed money than that you can earn at a different tournament, then you're going to be very smart about which, which events you play. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so just, just to talk about the numbers again. So that's 20, they, they need to play 20 PPAs, but there's 25 PPAs available. I believe correct. that is yeah. correct. I think five and, special events is what Connor told me. And six MLPs. And then you have U.S. Open Nationals and, you know, whatever little. All maybe the APPs. Some, yeah, APPs, maybe some exhibitions and pro-ams squeezed in there, a few of those. So, I mean, that's a lot of court time, a lot of tournaments, uh, a lot going on. And I think Tyler Lung's definitely on to something uh, just thinking of it uh, affecting the product i, I i've seen yeah. it so much on well, you've on talked about it in singles too right like, yeah at the end like, of the day like the product's terrible yeah these matches are garbage matches already yeah yeah these matches are garbage and we always talk about eyeballs we need eyeballs we need viewing if you know there's just a bunch of you know two shot or three shot singles matches because everyone's cramping or close to it uh, that doesn't look great as when we have you know whoever screeching their tires running this down running that down crazy you know athletic plays and 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 crazy points with uh, longer points with lots of good rallies Uh, it's obviously bad for the product and and we'll see how that gets ironed out moving forward got some more from my homie nate lumberg here okay Mm -hmm. i don't know quite what this question means but we can decipher it however we want (laughs) who will get exposed in the new mlp league who will get exposed? Exposed. I would say who's going to get exposed is uh, the teams that don't meet have me as a general manager. Oh, I like that. <laughs> fantastic answer. Yeah. But you're also making it seem like more than one team can have you as a general manager. Oh, I don't Seems think like a slight possible. conflict of interest. Seems like a slight one. Okay. I think that that's probably not correct. Unless, yeah. unless oh. you're in different divisions and you don't play each other. Ooh, spicy. spicy spicy okay adam next one um these are around nationals performance mm-hmm. who was the most disappointing at nationals that let's we can Ooh. call that player broadcast anything regarding nationals who was most disappointing? Uh, i mean i think there's probably i probably should have done my notes on the draws to find the player uh i i, I don't know exactly because there there was some there, there was maybe some players that I was hoping for more for, but maybe didn't quite have the regular partners. So it, it's kind of yeah. hard to to completely quantify who underachieved or not with, with some different uh, partnerships or maybe even possibly a lesser partner or two uh, in gender or mixed. So that's a tough call on a player. I've already bashed enough 
people on here. Very, very politically correct. Next question. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Who is the most surprising at nationals? The most surprising. Uh, I need my notes. Uh, I don't know. It it could, this is kind of a obvious take, but I mean, Anna Lee, I mean, it is re, I mean, she, she wins triple crowns all the time, but the manner that she's done it and some of the play that she had and that mixed doubles match, I mean, it's just, it's just completely silly and it just already, uh, just piled on to the fact that she's just head and shoulders above any of the other ladies, even though there's, you know, seven or eight of them in that group behind her, but she's, she's just tough, man. She's tough. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Um, and I think, I think, what do you think Riley and, uh, AL stronger. Uh, I mean, I believe I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but Catherine and, and Riley have played them tough uh, uh, several times. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not sure how many times they've won against it's always tight. brother and, it's always and Anna tight. Lee. Right. So to, to three Oh and three, uh, whatever that's, that's just quite a statement being it's made. an ass whooping at him it's an ass whooping, <laughs> it's an ass whooping right so uh yeah maybe maybe there's something to that maybe i mean we've already talked about riley being right there in in gender and maybe maybe now in mixed as well uh we, we know anna lee uh we, we just talked about that but maybe it's it's tighter on the men's side than we think and we think and that anna lee is even more of a gap between her and the next lady yep Grilled cheese with cheddar or pepper jack? Uh, cheddar. So I'm, I, I really like spicy food, but there's certain things that I don't like it for. So I like jalapenos on a lot of things, but certain things I, I don't necessarily need the spice. And I think that there's plenty of flavor in a, uh, in a grilled cheese without the pepper jack. Just my opinion. I like that. I, that's, that's a good answer. The pickleball world, the pickleball world, world's a hard word to say, world. Mm is in crisis right now from CPALW. What are your thoughts? We've covered that. <laughs> we very much covered that. <laughs> Slightly. Um, what does APP focus on becoming for players? This is from our boy, Casey Pat. Second shout out of the day. What up, Case? Uh, what does APP focus on becoming for the players? How do they market themselves now? Because we talked about this in the last episode, Adam. They are in, in my opinion, a very precarious position. Um. I know they have a solid purse next year. That's enough. Um, we saw Etta Wright and I believe Brooke Buckner get signed by the PPA, which mm-hmm. very smart on the PPA's end, right? They, you know, signing women is smart, in my mm-hmm. opinion. If mm-hmm. you can sign women, you like the league needs them, tour needs them, smart move. What does the APP need to do now? What are they going to become? What are they focusing on? Are they still going to try to compete and be a, be a pro tour? Uh, yes, that's a fantastic question. It was pretty funny. We saw APP make a post. Uh, I guess <laughs> it was like I guess it was Kindness Day or something. I didn't know yeah. that, that was a thing, but they made think, a post. Yeah, that they're all about well timed post from APP that they're all about integrity, sportsmanship, and you know showed players high fiving and whatever. So I, oh, I, I, I thought that that was hilarious, and I think that's always been the narrative that yeah they they have slightly less to offer in terms of funds and possibly facilities, but it's a great overall experience for fans, players, and amateurs, uh, all inclusive. And that's kind of been their, their thing from the beginning. So if, if uh, there's a few ways it could go, they could continue to be a rival tour to the PPA. They could possibly be uh, kind of the up and comers league where uh, you're less established, but talented and, and, and that's the case. They just started the Champions Tour, which is the uh, the senior pros uh, relabeling their tour, the Champions Tour. Uh, they have very good reviews in terms of amateur play. So, I, so I'm not sure if they were will continue to be a full fledged rival, which I really think they were last year uh, to the PPA, or they could possibly uh, go a couple different routes and, and uh, you know make their money and have their uh, have their reputation and, and what they're offering be uh, slightly different as opposed to a, uh, a full rival to the PPA. I, I'm not sure. And I think obviously this, uh, this year will say a lot uh, about that. <laughs> I love, I love your passion. Yeah, obviously just stop saying it. Just stop it. 
Just obviously. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about it again. Gosh. Shoot. Okay. Sponsorships. This is just I guess this isn't a question. This is just an additional comment by Casey Pat. Sponsorships okay. for players must increase. Pros need to raise the bottom line together. And I think that's a fair comment, Casey. Pros need to be together to raise the bottom line. That Pros goes. need to raise the bottom line together. I think together. I think so. The, what that goes back to is, and what he thinks is, like you mentioned, like a unified front, like a like a whether it's a council, whether it's a, a players union, whatever it may be. Um, but we should we should you know have have minimums. We should have all that stuff, and I think that's what he's referring to. And yeah, I think pros want more money Casey so I think you're on to something yeah people people seem to like money yeah uh, they seem to like it quite a bit uh, I don't really like it that much Robert it's necessary but yeah I'm, I'm no but not. like you don't need excess you just you want some mm-hmm. you want the basics you don't want to uh, worry about it but yeah whether uh, it's absolutely necessary provides freedoms that that is is important to to do the things that you want to do but uh whether I'm married to prof or not, I, I just, I need, I need what I need. And, and that's about it. I'm not going to, you know, model my life around money grabbing, but it is necessary. And, uh, yeah. Casey Pat, it's a unified front to, to, you know, have, have a baseline of, of, of earnings for, for players is, is something that probably needs to happen. League, well, yeah, league tour minimum, that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, bu- 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 Why is Adam's new haircut so effing hot? <laughs> uh, who who sent? Uh, was that my dummy not, account that sent that? <laughs> not prof, not prof. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Not prof. I got no, that, was the, that was from the Dink Pickleball. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew it. I was like, is that from my, I was like, that would be weird if it was from my mom. Cause she said hot, but that, that would be something my mom would say, you know, like, uh, yeah, whatever. So, uh, no, I, I'm, I like it. It's Hold easy on. to deal you with. You said your, your mom would say, why is Adam's haircuts hot? No, I, I said that it probably wasn't her because she said hot, but she would say something about my appearance on stream uh, oh, sure. that sure. most other people yeah. wouldn't. Uh, I remember doing the the next gen and, you know, I had like seven comments on eight hours of commentary and, you know, six of them were from my mother. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so fantastic. Yeah. So pr- pretty quality stuff. We always have to get a shout out to mom and Papa Stone on an episode. So there you go. Okay. So this is, uh, this is from, uh, Austin, your co-host on the APP tour. Lauren. Oh. Lax Lax Lauren. Lauren. Lax Lauren. Boring, but what are each of your goals for the upcoming year in terms of pickleball? Oh, I would say my goals are to... Be a GM. uh, Yes, be be the first true GM and team coach for an MLP team to uh, mix in some... Uh, teaching of the pickleball, which I very much enjoy to do, and mm-hmm. some commentating of the pickleball. And who knows, here in you know, around my birthday, around uh, baby having time, or in May, maybe if the body's feeling good, the second half of the year, I might, I might jump in a couple just to kind of see what's going on. Uh, definitely still retired, will never be a full time player again. But it, I think it'd be fun to jump back on the court a couple of times, maybe play with a, with a good friend and, and ruin someone's day. That sounds pretty fun to me. <laughs> One thing is for sure, you will be getting to the kitchen line. <laughs> yes, at a high clip. I might. <laughs> yeah. Once once I get there, we'll see. But I, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, my goals for the next year in pickleball is to play. A lot. I'm going to play. I'm looking to play a full schedule. I am looking to make my return and I plan on doing that in a big way. I, um, yeah, I don't like losing. I'm very competitive. I'm not okay just playing and getting decent results. So I am lining up partners. I am lining up my schedule and I'm coming for everybody, Adam. Everybody. Woo! I like that. And you, you don't like losing. You don't have mediocre results. And because of that reason, Robert, 
we don't have any tournaments together on the schedule. So <laughs> but it's good, it's good that you're finding some different partners if you don't want to have mediocre results. So man, kudos to you for, for searching those partners out. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually super pumped to be like, like the little I have played this year. I've one thing, one thing that I did realize, cause you know, into 2021, I played, I think I played 22 tournaments that year, mm-hmm. um, which felt like, 52 to be honest mm, it felt yes. like a lot and we talked about yes. a lot of burnout towards the end of the year um especially a stretch in the summer where i think i played like six or seven weeks in a row or something stupid i remember being at beer city and just being like i don't care <laughs> seeing myself on court like, <laughs> like yeah why am i out here yeah my favorite <laughs> is just blow it deckel like that's what that's what i'm thinking <laughs> yeah. in my mind Bar- deckel. yeah just, just just miss some shots so I can go home. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, I learned something uh, uh, this year in pickleball, and it was to not attack Megan Fudge. I thought that. Oh, was that's story. that's that's number two. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, but maybe think, it should be number one because yeah, I've you played didn't finish. her. I'll make you finish. Continue. I've played her a few times, and mm-hmm. there's no there's no female on tour that just makes me look stupid like she does, which is why I, I'm hoping to play some tournaments with her so I don't have to play yeah, against her. Because, there you go. Because Megan, Megan's good, and she's only going to get gooder. That was intentional, guys. I'm not that stupid. Those are great sunglasses, by the way. Gooders. They are. I love gooders. Also, you know, looking for sponsors, so gooder, hit us up. Um, um, knock around as well. Tomahawk mm-hmm. Shades, what's up? Talk to you guys online. Come hey, on. We'll take, we'll, take, we'll take money from anybody, not anybody. Come on. Come on. Not blood money. Come on. <laughs> Will you now refer to Darth as simply MBFF and let everyone try and figure it out? That's funny. What? That's a that's a chat reference. Oh, I oh I I I downloaded the Discord thing. Oh, I can't you gotta figure get out how Discord. to get it. I can't figure out how to get it going, man. There's a I lot of tomfoolery on Discord. I mean, I'm I need some help. There. Odoth is on there. Hey Shay's on there. God, these people uh, Slim, know so much. Ism, Dude. Steve from Cayman. Like, shout out to all the homies. God, they know so much. They just they know, know so, so much. much. <laughs> but yeah, I got to get on that chat. Uh, maybe I'll figure it out. Oh, can't forget Trevor Pickleball. Tre- Trev's my oh. r- ride or die. Don't forget. Seems Trev. like the, Adam, the we'll guy. get you in there. We'll get okay, you. Okay, good, there. good, good, good. Um, okay, so what else do we got? Just a couple more. Oh, this is from the People's Champ, John Davison. Ooh, Davison. Oh, he wants a, he wants us to eventually do a 2014 mock draft using the same draft format. My God, that would take that would take a week. But yeah. hey, we've been known to do it. So maybe maybe yeah. we do a mock draft, Adam. People's uh, Piaples, people's champ. Piaples, I like it. Uh, I think that might be uh, yeah, that might be all I got. So do you have anything else we need to cover, Adam? Robert, I think I think we really we really went for it today. And oh, you know, we don't need to do results, do we? No, 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 no. That's no. The, this is what the hey. people wanted, and we we, we gave it to them. Pickleballtermist.com if you want to see results. Enjoy. Bye, Robert. Bye, Adam. Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Yeah.